Hi, I'm Paul, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to easily back up and restore your Obsidian files, plugins, and settings in your vault. Whether you're looking for a daily backup routine, recovering lost data, or just curious about my personal backup strategy, this video has you covered. Join me as we protect your personal knowledge system and ensure that your Obsidian vault stays backed up no matter what happens to your device. Why backup Obsidian? Why is backing up your Obsidian Vault important? So the first reason is data protection. If you accidentally delete a file or folder or have a hardware failure, if you experience a cyber attack, there's a natural disaster, then you may lose your important data. Time and cost saving. If you lose files or folders, this could take a substantial amount of time to restore that information and it might even cost you more money having to replace hardware. Security backups will provide security against ransomware or malicious attacks on your PC. Peace of mind. By having a regular backup schedule, you can rest easily knowing that your Obsidian Vault is protected. Easier to update. When you want to update Obsidian or experiment with Obsidian plugins, it's nice to have a backup of your files in case something goes wrong. The 3 2 1 rule for backups. The 3 2 1 backup rule is a widely recognized and recommended strategy for ensuring data protection and recovery. It is designed to minimize the risk of data loss due to various failures or disasters. The 3 2 1 method consists of three copies of your data, two different storage media, and one off site location. This rule highlights that we should maintain at least three copies of our important data. By storing that data on different storage mediums, this diversifies our backups and protects us against media specific failures. We can also go one step further and save our vault to an off-site location and this protects against a localized disaster such as fire, flood or theft that could damage or destroy all our on-site backups. My backup strategy. I mainly use Obsidian on my Windows PC and I have a daily backup strategy. So I don't save my Obsidian Vault to my operating system C drive because if anything gets corrupted with Windows, I don't want to lose my precious Obsidian files. So I move them to a second D drive and this is my first copy of my Obsidian Vault. I have a daily backup schedule running with EaseUS to do backup, and that saves a local backup to my E drive, which becomes my second copy. Then I also have a daily Z external backup, which is a 16 terabyte hard drive, and this becomes my third copy. Because I self-host my own sync server called SyncThing, I also push my files up to my Proxmox home lab, which becomes a fourth copy. Now you'll probably notice one thing missing from my backup strategy, and that is a off-site backup. So I don't tend to backup my files to third-party cloud providers because of privacy. So with that being said, let's now go learn how we can backup and restore our Obsidian Vault with free backup software. How to set up EaseUS backup software. EaseUS to do to backup is a comprehensive data protection software that offers backup and restore functionality for Windows users. It was first released in 2009 and has over a decade of experience in the field of data protection. So the first thing we want to do is we want to download and install some free backup software to backup our Obsidian Vault. I would recommend starting with EaseUS Home Backup. So if you head over to easeus.com forward slash backup tax software, you'll be presented with a few options. So we can see under the free here, we just hit learn more. And that takes us to this landing page where we can download EaseUS to do backup for free for Windows 11, 10, 8 and Vista. Now the website will try and encourage you to purchase the home version. Usually they'll offer a lifetime upgrades when you first sign up. 
Personally, I do have the Home Lifetime Pro version. And if you want to see the differences between the two versions, you can head over to the comparison site. Have a look at the different versions. The free version is enough to allow you to back up and restore your Obsidian files. So if you're not sure if you want the lifetime version, then just stick with the free version. So I'm going to go ahead and hit download. So once the download's complete, I'm going to go ahead and launch the installer. I'm going to select yes, then I'm going to click install now. I won't need the website anymore, so I can close that. So now we've got Ease US to do backup free installed. We'll double click to launch the application. We'll be presented with the welcome to Ease US to do backup screen. So just go ahead and click create backup. We're going to create our first local backup on our main device that we use Obsidian on. So I'm just going to click file. Then I need to go choose my Obsidian Vault. So in this instance, my Obsidian Vault is on my D drive. So I'm going to select my Obsidian Vault and I can see that all my Obsidian folders are selected inside there. I'll click on OK. Then I need to name my backup. So I'll come up to the pencil icon and I'm going to call this one Local Obsidian Backup. And I'll hit save. Now I need to set up my schedule. So I'll come down to options and I'll head over to schema and I'm going to choose daily. I recommend doing a daily backup, but if you want to spread it out through the week, then you're quite welcome to do that. I'm going to set mine at nine o'clock because I know I'll be using my computer at that time and it will be powered on. It's going to ask me what backup method I want to use. So I don't want to take a full backup every time, so I'm going to select incremental. I could create a full backup every so many backups, but it creates a full one on the first backup anyway, so I don't really want to do that. There's a couple of options here to wait the computer to run this backup or run the backup if it's missed, so I'll leave those as default. Then I'm going to click on OK. So now I have to select where the backup is going to go, so I'll select this destination on the right hand side. I'm going to choose my local drive and I'm going to put it on my second hard drive, which is a local backup drive. So I'm going to select local backup and hit OK. Now, because I haven't run the backup before, it's going to ask me to save. So I'm going to select save. Depending on how big your Obsidian Vault is, it may take a certain amount of time. So I'm just going to hit back up now. So I won't make you sit through this part of the video. I'll skip ahead. So one of the benefits of the paid plan is you do get faster backups. But as these will be running in the background, I don't think it matters too much. So now we've taken our first local backup. So if we come over to the left here and right click, we can go down and left click image manager and I can see that we've got a full backup created. So inside the image manager, I can manage multiple backups as they start to build up and I could merge or delete them. I've only got one at the moment, so I can only delete it. If I right click, I can open the location. And that shows me that it's currently on my local backup drive. And I can see here that it's created a local backup and the size is 465 megabytes. And I can see that we've got a full backup created. Let's go run through a couple of scenarios. So I'm going to jump into Obsidian and I've got a note here from Barry Swartz. And I'm going to just go ahead and delete this file. So let's say hypothetically, I want to restore this file that I deleted today. So what I can do is I can come into Ease US and I can right click on my local backup and I can left click recovery. And then I simply just drop down my backup. Now I need to navigate to the file that I want to recover. So I know it's under my personal development authors folder. 
Now I know it's located here, but if you didn't know where it was, you can do a search up the top here and then we can find the file that way. Then I just check the file that I want to recover. Now I can either recover it to a location, recover to the original location and replace existing files. I just want to recover the file to the original location. So I'll hit proceed. Now, given that it's a markdown file and it's quite small, it's only going to take three seconds to recover that file. So I can see the details here and then I can hit finish. So if I jump back into Obsidian, I can see that the file has been restored. So let's run through another scenario which may be useful. So what you might find is when you're making changes to your .obsidian config files or installing or changing plugins, you might want to roll back to a previous version because of plugin conflicts or you've changed a setting that you want to revert back to. I can see that I've got one plugin update available. So if I left click, it tells me that Dynamic Outline has a new version 1.16.0. So if I navigate to my settings under Community Plugins, I can see that Dynamic Outline is currently 1.15.1. So I may want to upgrade this plugin, but I'm not sure if it's going to work well with the other plugins that I have installed. So the first thing I would do is take a backup with my backup software and then I'll go ahead and update the plugin. So now when I go into the settings, I can see that the plugin is on the latest version. But let's say hypothetically it was having issues working with one of my other plugins and I wanted to roll back to the previous version then this is when Ease US to do backup will come in handy. So this process is similar as before. Right click, left click recovery, then expand and navigate and uncheck Obsidian Vault. Go to your .obsidian folder, go to your plugins folder and find the plugin that you updated that you want to revert back to. So in this case, dynamic outline, except this time we're going to replace the existing files. So I'm going to check replace existing files. Then I hit proceed and it's going to say, do I want to replace the existing files? I'll select yes. So it's taken two seconds to replace those files. So if I navigate back into my file explorer, I can see that there was only four files that were recovered. So if I jump into Obsidian and jump into Community Plugins and scroll down, you can see that it still shows version 1.16. So what I need to do is close and reopen Obsidian. Then when I go into the settings and select Community Plugins, I can see that Dynamic Outline has now reverted back to 1.15.1. So this software is good when you're making changes in any of your options or you want to revert a plugin back to previous settings or you just want to break something and then revert back later. It's handy for doing those sort of tasks. And we can see here that notification for that plugin has returned as well. Okay, so now we have our second copy of our Obsidian Vault backed up on our local machine. So the next backup to set up would be an external hard drive. Now this could be a network attached storage device. So I'm going to select new backup, select file, and I'm going to navigate down and select my Obsidian Vault again. I'll deselect any additional folders that I don't need. Make sure everything's selected. Hit OK. I'm going to rename this one. This one will be external Obsidian Vault Backup. So now I know this one is going to be backed up externally to this machine. So I need to select where it's going. I'm going to select local because I know the external hard drive is connected to this computer. Then I'm going to select the Vault number 2x drive here, which is my 16 terabyte external hard drive. Now, before I select backup now, I'm going to come back into the options, go up to my schema, select daily. 
Well, I'm going to delay this one to quarter past nine, as this one will be running at nine o'clock. I'll leave everything else as default. Select OK. Hit save. Now, because I haven't run this backup before, I need to hit backup now. My external backup completed in just under one minute. A notification will appear at the bottom right. I can view details or select I know to acknowledge the completed backup. If I go and review my backup strategy, I can see now I have three copies of my Obsidian Vault. The original Vault on the D drive, my local backup, and my external backup. I self-host my own sync server with SyncThing, so I can push my files up to my server to create a fourth copy if I would like. The only thing missing from my strategy is the offsite location. As mentioned in previous videos, I don't tend to use third-party providers for privacy reasons, but if I were to use a cloud provider, I could set my offsite location as follows. So you could do this by selecting new backup, selecting file, selecting your Obsidian Vault, and then for the destination, you would choose network, and then you would choose a cloud storage. Now you could also back it up to a NAS, but that's not off-site usually. So for a new cloud connection, you left click and then you would select the cloud connection that you would want to back up to. The most popular is probably Google Drive or OneDrive. So the only thing left to do would be to come up to Tools, select Import Export Task, and then export the two or three tasks that you've created to a safe location. So if your computer breaks and you need to restore these two tasks in another copy of Ease US To Do Backup, then you've got your tasks ready to go. So I'll just put these on the external hard drive for now. So if we have a look in our 16 terabyte external hard drive, we now have our backup Obsidian Vault. We also have our local backup. The original Obsidian Vault files and folders live on the D drive. I hope this guide helps you feel more confident about backing up your Obsidian Vault. Protecting your notes isn't just about files, it's about preserving your ideas and insights. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to join our community of knowledge builders for more tips on Obsidian and personal knowledge management. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.